Hello, welcome. Today I just wanted to get out some of my old SPNS Spokane, Portland, and Seattle equipment and run it once again on the lab. I suppose, like many of us, I've collected more stuff than I could ever run regularly on the layout, but you know how that goes. As our interests get perked, we find ourselves collecting a lot of stuff. I've always liked the roads of the Pacific Northwest, the Great Northern and the Northern Pacific, as well as their jointly owned SPNS. So, I've acquired quite a bit of their equipment over the years, and indeed, when I built this layout, my second, I built a lower level of staging where I could park equipment of the different roads and bring them up when I'd be operating that road. And while I can still do exactly that, my focus became more involved with my first favorite roads, the SP and its subsidiary, the Northwestern Pacific. Now, you know what that led to. Exactly. With all the equipment I have for my favorite roads, taking up all of my wonderfully conceived staging arrangement, old Jim Hill's lines were not to be seen on the layout anymore. Anyway, while trying to unclutter the layout and get away from my present gridlock, I found a little breathing room once again, and I decided to get out some of the old stuff and let it have a bit of a run. Now, I apologize for the jerkiness of some of these engines, but you got to remember, these models are around 40 years old now. And seeing that I, myself, don't move around too well anymore, I just hope you can sympathize a bit. The SBNS was somewhat unique among Western roads in that the majority of their diesel power fleet was built by the American Locomotive Company, or, as we better know it, ALCO. Though they did own engines built by Baldwin and EMD, over the years ALCO would supply 119 diesel locomotives to the Northwest's own railway, that is, if my math is correct, Obviously, many factors come into play when trying to decide what locomotives might be acquired. And while the SBNS was jointly owned by James Hill's two bigger roads, the Great Northern and the Northern Pacific, the SBNS was run as a separate company. Indeed, there were times when the SBNS seemed to be quite autonomous. But then, at other times, its parent roads seemed to be calling the shots. So, when it came time to buy locomotives, folks from all three of the roads would chime in with opinions, and while the parent roads were big buyers of EMD models, it seemed that the parents would have final say in buying Alcos for the SPNS. So, the whys and wherefores explaining the buying of Alcos will be left for you to investigate. At any rate, Alcos would dominate the SPNS roster right up until the BN merger day in 1970. When anyone thinks of the SPNS, they naturally envision first and second generation Alcos. Besides a fleet of over 30 FAs and FBs, the SPNS had over 30 RS2s and 3s, as well as RS1s, S1s, and S2 models not mentioning the 35 second generation Century Series units in its latter years. Pretending to be in Portland, we see S2 number 23 moving cars in the yard, painted in the broad stripe scheme. It is definitely a break from the old. Number 23 would appear on the SPNS in 1943, and would last into the BN merger years until she was retired in 1973. Passing by her sister S2, number 25, we can compare the old and new paint schemes. Number 25 would appear on the road in January 1944, and would also continue working into the early merger years of the Burlington Northern. These 1,000-horsepower Alco engines 
certainly earn their keep. South of Portland, down into the Willamette Valley, another Jim Hill line served in Oregon. The Oregon Electric was a wholly owned subsidiary of the SPNS, which in turn was itself wholly owned by two other railroads. This being the world of railroading, I suppose. But it is still rather interesting. Even more interesting is the fact that the four Oregon Electric RS1s would be lettered for that railroad instead of its real owner, the SPNS. But at least for some years from 1945, when they were originally purchased for the OE, until 1951, when they were formally sold to the railroad who already owned them, the OE 52, 3, 4, and 5 would be lettered for the Oregon Electric, the only SPNS locomotives to ever be so lettered. Back in Portland, RS1 number 50, one of the six RS1s the SPNS bought in 1945, rolls by us. I don't know if an RS1 was ever around to see a center flow hopper during their career, but it looks like it's handling two of them just fine. Number 50 would be sold just prior to the BN merger, but would continue to work in Canada for a few more years. What's this? EMD? What? Uh, I know, I know. This is supposed to be an all Alco show, but I had to show off EMD number 42. I just love her original as delivered paint scheme, but besides having the wrong number, she should be number 45. She is an electromotive, forgive me. And oh, oops, sorry, another EMD, SW9, number 44, slides past showing off her new broad striped scheme. Yeah, looks good though. Ah, oh, jeez, I know, I know. There goes the Alco show, but Jeeps 150 and 153 jumped in, demanding screen time. So let's just placate them. The SPNS had six GP9s, all arriving in 1956. Four of the six numbers 150 to 153 were to torpedo boats. Set up with steam generators for passenger service as well as freight service. I tried to keep them out of the picture, but they insisted. Sorry. Thanks for looking in.